Hello there, welcome to News at 10 on Rajya Sabha Television, your one stop for the day's the biggest news stories from India and across the world and the stories that you might have missed during the night. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor and here are this morning's headlines. Scrutiny of nominations for vice presidential poll today. M. Venkaya Naidu and Gopal Krishna Gandhi are main contenders for the polls to be held on 5th of August. Mayavati submits a resignation from the upper house to Rajya Sabha chairman for allegedly not being allowed to speak on Dalit issues. Centre says Mayavati has insulted the house. Nagaland chief minister faces a flow test. A Guwahati High Court rejects his petition to stay governor's directive to prove majority in the assembly. Death toll in Assam floods climbs to 69. Chief Minister meets Prime Minister Narendra Modi, requests him to launch PM's special program for flood and erosion control. And a nine-judge bench of the Supreme Court to begin hearing the contentious issue of right to privacy as a fundamental right under the Constitution of India. The scrutiny of nominations for the vice presidential elections will take place today. Tuesday was the last day for submitting of nomination papers. The voting for the vice presidential polls will take place on 5th of August between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. Counting of votes will also take place on the same day. Rajya Sabha Secretary General Shamsher K. Sheriff is the returning officer for the election. And early on Tuesday, NDA backed Venkaya Naidu and the opposition's choice, Gopal Krishna Gandhi, filed their nominations for the vice presidential elections. Venkaya Naidu filed his papers in the parliament complex with the BJP President Amit Shah, senior BJP leaders LK Advani, Murli Manohar Joshi and leaders from BJP allies present by his side. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Finance Minister Arun Chaitli, External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj were among those who proposed and seconded Naidu's candidature. The BJP parliamentary board had earlier picked Naidu as the NDA's vice presidential nominee. Naidu then resigned as the Urban Development and Information Broadcasting Minister hours before filing his nomination papers. So I assure the people that on being erected, I will uphold the traditions and standards set by worthy predecessors and uphold the dignity of the office of the Vice President of India. So it will be my endeavor to strengthen that parliamentary democratic system. And uh, former West Bengal Governor Gopal Krishna Gandhi also filed his nomination for Vice President in uh, the presence of senior Congress and other opposition leaders including the JDU. Now, Gopal Krishna Gandhi was picked up uh, by 18 opposition parties to be their nominee for the post of vice president. The vice president uh, election is uh, scheduled to be held on 5th of August. Janata and Rajaniti ke beech mein e bohot badi khai bani. Main nagrikon ki or se us khai ko milana chahta hu, usko kam karna chahta hu. And Textiles Minister Smriti Irani has been given the additional charge of the Information and Broadcasting Ministry. Irani was handed over the ministry after the resignation of uh, M. Venkaya Naidu from the cabinet to contest the vice presidential poll. Now, the portfolio of uh, urban development, which uh, too was with the Naidu, has now been given to Narendra Singh Tomar, Minister of uh, Social Justice and Empowerment. The BJP had on Monday decided to field Naidu as a NDS candidate for the post of vice president. More news from Parliament and BSP Chief Mayawati met a chairman of the Rajya Sabha, Mohammad Hamid Ansari, and submitted her resignation in person. Now, the chairman will be duly examining the resignation. Now, Mayawati's move came after she was allegedly not being allowed to speak about atrocities against uh, Dalits in the House. The government uh, rejected her allegations against the Uttar Pradesh government while maintaining 
that the people had given a resounding mandate to the BJP in the state. BSP Chief Mayawati on Tuesday mounted a strident attack against the Uttar Pradesh government in the upper house. But even as she criticized the state government for its handling of the caste violence in Shabbirpur village in Saharanpur district, the chair asked her to tender a notice under appropriate rules to initiate a discussion. As the Treasury benches objected to the allegations and the chair urged her to conclude the statement, Mayawati said she will resign right away if she was not allowed to speak in the House. The government refuted all charges and asked Mayawati to apologize for allegedly insulting the house. Flanked by BSP members, Mayawati then walked out. Yeah. Okay. Mayawati's term ends next April. According to Rajya Sabha rules, a member who intends to resign must write to the chairman. If the member hands over the letter in person and conveys to the chairman that the resignation is voluntary and genuine, the chairman may accept it immediately. But if the chairman receives the letter by any other means, he may make inquiries to determine if the resignation is voluntary and genuine. If he determines otherwise, the chairman may reject the resignation. Kriti Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And the Congress party staged a walkout in the Rajya Sabha on Tuesday after claiming that the opposition was being gagged. The leader of uh, the opposition, Gulam Nabi Azad, said that the opposition was not being allowed to discuss discrimination that they are being faced by Dalits and minorities in the country. The government, however, said that it was ready to discuss all the contentious issues. <laughs> Opposition parties tried to corner the government in the upper house on a host of issues. Please. Leader of opposition Gulam Nabi Azad said notices have been given to discuss the farmer crisis, the anti-Dalit violence and lynching of minorities. He accused the government of stifling the opposition's voice in the house. All party meeting Parso Maniye Pradhan Mantri Ji ki upasthiti mein hui thi. Hamne उसमें स्पष्ट बताया था कि विपक्ष हाउस को रोकने में हाउस की कार्रवाई में बाधा डालने में कोई रुचि नहीं रखता अगर अपोजिशन चाहती है तो वो सिर्फ जो देश में मुद्दे जो तकलीफें हैं चाहे वो किसान की हो मजदूर की हो दलित की हो अल्पसंख्यक की हो व्यापारी की हो मजदूर की हो Congress members staged a walkout from the house as a mark of protest. <laughs> CPM leader Sitaram Yechuri criticized the government's policies, which he said were pushing farmers to the brink of suicide. We are saying these are the issues. Attacks on Dalit. Atrocities are growing. No, let attacks on minorities. Atrocities are That's growing. That's why I'm saying no, farmers us, are being pushed to the side. Thousands are here in Delhi today, Very protesting, true. demanding Very what true. this government itself promised. Yeah. They promised one and a half times the minimum support price from input costs. Three years, they have not done that. They have to listen to the government was quick to rubbish all charges. Opposition members, however, trooped into the well of the house and raised the pitch against the government. Zero hour and question hour were washed away as the standoff prevailed between the opposition and the treasury benches. The house was first adjourned till noon, then till 2 p.m. House is adjourned.
Meanwhile, in the Lok Sabha, the second day of the monsoon session on Tuesday saw uproar over the condition of farmers and cow slaughter, among other issues. Now, Speaker Subitra Mahajan adjourned the House till Wednesday. Opposition members created uproar on several issues leading to disruptions in House proceedings. Congress and TMC members were on their feet, shouting slogans and walking into the well of the House, while BJP members from Karnataka were displaying placards seeking protection of honest officers. The house stands at June to meet again on Wednesday, 19 July 2017 at 11 a.m. Now to some other news, uh, Foreign Secretary S.J. Shankar appeared before a parliamentary panel on Tuesday over the issue of a border standoff with China. Now, Jay Shankar informed the panel that a China stand on the recent uh, Doklam dispute in Sikkim has been unusually aggressive and articulate. However, he maintained that New Delhi was engaged with Beijing in diffusing the tension through diplomatic channels. The Foreign Secretary also told the panel that India had clearly outlined its position on the border and the Chinese have their own position. He said that China has misinterpreted India's position, forcing it to clarify. Remember, Indian and Chinese soldiers have been locked in a face-off for over a month now after Indian troops stopped the Chinese army from building a road in that area. Now, a ju nine-judge bench of the Supreme Court uh, will commence hearing from today to decide if the contentious issue of right to privacy is a fundamental right under the Constitution. A five-judge Constitution bench headed by CJI, which was to deal with the pleas challenging the validity of the Aadhaar scheme and the right to privacy attached to it, was faced uh, with the past two verdicts which were delivered in 1950 and 1962 by larger benches holding that the privacy right was not a fundamental right. The Apex Court has said that the nine-judge bench would uh, deal with a limited issue of right to privacy and the correctness of the past two judgments. The matter challenging the Aadhaar scheme would then be referred back to a smaller bench. The court asked uh, Attorney General uh, K.K. Venugopal, representing the centre and other senior advocates who appeared for petitioners opposed to the Aadhaar scheme to submit their written beliefs in the meantime. The petitioners had claimed that collection and sharing of biometric information as required under the scheme was a breach of the fundamental right to privacy. We'll take a very short break here. We'll be back with more news. Stay with us. Azadi ki jang larne wale mere dosto. Azadi chahiye to uski kimat khun deke chukani hogi. Tum mujhe khun do. Main tumhe azadi dunga. के बागी फौजियों पर अंग्रेज देश द्रोह का मुकदमा चलाएंगे उन तीनों के बचने के चांसेस कम हैं दिस ट्रायल एंड इट्स जजमेंट विल बी रिमेंबर्ड थ्रू आवर हिस्ट्री Big developing story coming in from Nagaland, uh, where Chief Minister Shirozeli Rizitsu is facing a flow test in the State Assembly. Now, a special session of the State Assembly is underway at the moment. This after the Guwahati High Court uh, dismissed his uh, plea on Tuesday to stay the governor's uh, directive to him to seek a trust vote. The court stated that there was no merit in the petition which was filed by the Chief Minister. It also left the matter to the discretion of the governor. The Chief Minister had filed the petition on 14th of July. Now, the Chief Minister is uh, facing rebellion by 43 ruling Naga People's Front MLAs led by former Chief Minister T.R. Zeliang, demanding the change of leadership in the present House of uh, 59. Zeliang, who was forced out of the office in February after large-scale protests over holding of uh, urban local body elections with 33% uh, reservation for women, had staked a claim to form the government, saying that he had the majority support in the House. 
Meanwhile, four BJP legislators and the Nagaland BJP president called on the governor and submitted a letter supporting TR Salyung. Remember, BJP is a pre-poll alliance partner of the Naga People's Front and a constituent of the Democratic Alliance of Nagaland government in the state. Now, the Gorkhaland Movement Coordination Committee has decided to continue its strike against their demand of a separate state of Gorkhaland. The committee will hold its next meet on 1st of August. The committee also decided that letters will be initiated to the governor as well as Chief Minister of West Bengal and the governor of Sikkim regarding alleged atrocities of the West Bengal government. JJM supporters also held a protest march in Mirika town carrying the body of Ashok Tamang. Now, JJM says that he was killed in clashes with security personnel on Monday night. However, police has denied the allegations. Meanwhile, uh, Union Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad refuted the Trinamool Congress's charges and said that the centre was fully cooperating uh, with the state government. And this came after West Bengal government to blame centre for not cooperating and also for the unrest in the Hill District for a separate state. We... Uh appeal to the government of India to take a stock of the situation uh, to, to uh, take uh, uh, immediate action so that the such kind of heinous you know killing of innocent people is prevented and the situations may be brought under control. We don't instigate. You have seen we have sent armed forces. We are fully cooperated. But ultimately, the state government has to take initiative. And a big story coming in from Nagaland itself uh, on uh, the Nagaland flow test. When, and we understand that Nagaland Chief Minister Shuru Zeli Lizutsu has failed to turn up to face uh, the flow test. Now, assembly has been adjourned sine die. We'll uh, keep getting you all the updates uh, from Nagaland there. But time uh, to move on in the bulletin. Uh, the news from Bihar. Deputy Chief Minister Tejaswi Yadav yesterday attended the cabinet meeting chaired by Chief Minister Nitish Kumar. And later, Yadav also met uh, Nitish in his chamber. The meeting comes amid ongoing uncertainties between uh, two, two ruling alliance uh, partners, uh, the JD and the Rashtriya Janata Dal. However, it is not known uh, what uh, transpired during this meeting. The cracks in the Grand Alliance appeared after the CBI conducted raids on properties linked to RJD Chief Lalu Prasad Yadav and his family and launched an FIR against the Jaspi for a criminal conspiracy, cheating and criminal misconduct. The JDU had told Lalu to come out clean on the source of his assets. On to some other news, uh, Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi will today address uh, a Kisan Akrosh rally in Rajasthan. The Congress Vice President is expected to raise the farmers' issues during the rally. The move comes uh, amid uh, the Congress's uh, aim to corner the ruling uh, government over the agrarian crisis in the state. Now, con according to Congress leaders, uh, Rajasthan, with the 40 lakh farmers burdened with loans, ranks third in this regard among all the states in the country. The Congress leaders also pointed out that in the last two years, 61 farmers have committed suicide in the state, with the six taking the extreme step in the last 15 days itself. The party has accused Rajasthan Chief Minister Vasundhara Raji of being silent on the issue and not paying any compensation to the farmers. News from the northeast of the country and no respite from heavy rains there in the coming days, says the Met Department. The death toll in the Assam floods has climbed to 69 and now nearly 9 lakh people remain affected. Assam Chief Minister Sarbanan Sonowal yesterday met a Prime Minister Narendra Modi and discussed the flood situation in the state. Heavy rains and floods continue to wreak havoc in many parts of the country. The death toll in the Assam floods has climbed to 69 while nearly 9 lakh people remain affected. Authorities are running 334 relief camps and distribution centers where more than 1 lakh people are currently taking shelter. Assam Chief Minister Sarbanan Sonowal on Tuesday met Prime Minister Narendra Modi and apprised him about the flood situation in the state. Sonowal said though the current wave of flood has receded, 
21 districts were still reeling under flood waters. He further requested the Prime Minister to launch the Prime Minister's special program for flood and erosion control. जो भी कदम हमें उठाना सही ऐसा कदम उठाया गया है ताकि बांड पीड़ित लोगों को मदद मिले चाहे अनाज का हो चाहे मेडिकल का हो चाहे भेटनी का हो चाहे एग्रीकल्चर हो अलग अलग मतलब चाहे रेस्क्यू के लिए हो एनडीआरएफ एसडीआरएफ सब लगे हुए हैं माननीय मोदी जी ने हमें आश्वासन दिया है कि असम सरकार को जो भी मदद चाहिए इस विषय पर सब मदद दिया जाएगा Parts of Arunachal Pradesh have also witnessed the worst floods and landslides in years following more than a week of incessant rains. The central government approved 132 crore rupees for Arunachal Pradesh and Nagaland as assistance for flash floods and landslides that occurred during 2016-17. Meanwhile the Met department has sounded off a fresh alert of monsoon depression forming off coastal Odisha leading to wet spells for east and central India during the next 4 to 5 days in the light of you uh, know <coughs> warnings given by the IMD uh, regarding the deep depression especially the depression converting into deep depression so we are expecting a heavy rains uh, today and tomorrow and already uh, rains are uh, Uh, widespread rains are taking place in the entire uh, Srikakulam district. So we have alerted the entire uh, uh, district administration staff, and uh, we are advising the people not to venture into the. At the same time, we are also uh, advising the um, fishermen not to venture into the sea. Also, simultaneously, we have uh, prepared uh, fully. We geared up fully for uh, no meeting any eventuality. Death toll due to rain in Gujarat rose to 11 after more than two people were reported dead in the last 24 hours. While relief and rescue operation continue in rain affected areas the meteorological center has predicted light to moderate rain in several parts of the state over the next 2 days Navsari mein pichle 24 ghante mein kafi barish hui hai Gandevi aur Chikli taluka mein 250 se 300 mm lagbhag 10 inch ki barish hui hai The death toll in Odisha floods rose to 4 as the state government sounded an alert in 12 districts in view of the likelihood of heavy rainfall due to depression though the overall situation improved slightly around 65000 people have been affected by the floods the twin cities of bhuvneshwar and katak have also been affected due to incessant rainfall since saturday bureau report rajyasabha tv Big story coming in from the United States and the White House has confirmed that US President Donald Trump met his Russian counterpart of Vladimir Putin at a second previously undisclosed meeting at the G20 in Germany earlier this month. The two leaders held a formal 2-hour bilateral meeting on 7th of July in which Trump later said that Putin denied the allegations that he directed efforts to meddle in the 2016 US presidential election, but media reports emerged about a second conversation during a dinner for the group of G20 leaders and their spouses in Hamburg now it has been reported that a trump got up from his seat a half way through the dinner and spent about an hour talking privately with the putin joined only by putin's own translator however a white house official described it as a brief conversation and not a second meeting it is noteworthy that a trump putin relationship is under intense scrutiny among uh, allegations of collusion between Russia and the Trump campaign US intelligence uh, believes uh, that uh, Russia helped the Trump in last year's presidential polls Never in my life as a political scientist have I seen two countries major countries with a constellation of national interests that are as dissonant while the two leaders seem to be doing everything possible to make nice nice and be close to each other like that that's what people don't understand and let's get you some more international news now in world rap the united states unveiled new economic sanctions against iran over its ballistic missile program on tuesday and it said that it was deeply concerned about tehran's malign activities in the middle east The US government said that it was targeting 18 entities and people for supporting what it said was illicit Iranian actors or a transnational criminal activity. The announcement came a day after the Trump administration certified that Tehran was complying with the 2015 deal to limit its nuclear program. China has started commercial production of its CH5 rainbow drone. 
The drone is touted to be a rival to the U.S. unmanned aerial vehicle MQ-9 Reaper, which could attack targets on the ground. The first uh, flight of a mass-producer CH-5 Rainbow on Friday last week signals China's readiness to export it. At 69 million US dollars, Reaper is the world's most expensive drone. German Chancellor Angela Merkel has sharply criticized the Turkey's detention of a German human rights activist, Peter Stuartner, as absolutely unjustified. She said that the case was of utmost concern and that the German government could do all it could to secure his release. Now, Studner and eight other activists were detained uh, this month on terror charges while they were attending a workshop near Istanbul. And Saudi police have questioned a young woman who appeared in a video wearing a mini skirt and crop top in public. Now, State TV said that the woman who dressed in indecent clothing had been referred to the public prosecutor. The video sparked a heated debate on social media with some even demanding that she be punished for breaking the Muslim country's strict dress code. News from the world of cricket and the BCCI has appointed uh, Bharat Arun as Indian cricket team's new bowling coach. Now, the confirmation of the appointment came after newly appointed Indian coach Ravi Shastri met with the four-member committee in Mumbai. Arun had uh, previously served in the same capacity from 2014 to 2016. Now, the cricket body also has retained uh, Sanjay Bangar as uh, the assistant coach and R. Sridhar as the fielding coach till uh, the 2019 ODI World Cup. The first challenge for the new coaching setup will begin later this month when India tours Sri Lanka to play three tests, five one days and one T20. And Vice President Mohammad Hamid Ansari has said that the Indian manufacturing sector needs to change according to the current needs of the market in order to compete with the global market. He was speaking at an award function organized by the Tata Group. The Vice President presented the AIMA JRD Tata Corporate Leadership Award to Tata Sons Chairman Chandrasekharan. There is a genuine need for change in the internal environment of Indian firms that can foster competitive thinking and behavior. These inherent weaknesses of our corporates are compounded by the slow international growth over the last few years and the so-called debt addiction of our firms. That's all in this edition of news. Coming up ahead is Parliament News in both Hindi and English. Thanks for watching.